Kwamba. Your mission is clear. To defend and protect the territorial integrity of the Republic of Kenya is the mission of the Kenya Defense Forces, KDF. The forces also assist and cooperate with other authorities in situations of emergency or disaster and to restore peace in any part of Kenya affected by unrest or instability as assigned. KDF, which comprises of the Kenya Army, Kenya Air Force and Kenya Navy, is made up of gallant women and men who work 24 hours, 7 days a week to ensure that Kenyans are safe. Military was deemed a male domain owing to its complexities that come with training as well as battlefield engagements. However, this narrative has changed and thousands of women have joined the military, breaking the stereotypes and proving that they can also play an important role in protecting and defending their country. This, I am proud to state, demonstrates clearly our commitment to engendering the security sector and more importantly our resolve to empower and to position our women in positions of leadership. According to a 2016 UN Security Council report, Kenya was ranked first in the world among troop contributing countries that make up the UN peacekeeping troops for the deployment of female military officers. More than 19% of the Kenyan peacekeeping troops deployed in the field are women. Several female recruits have completed the course with their male counterparts, and this is yet another manifestation of my administration's commitment to ensure equal opportunities to all, and indeed to empower our women folk. President Kenyatta appreciates that women are a critical national asset with great potential to shape, influence and contribute to all spheres of development and that empowering them strengthens the family, society and the nation at large. It is important for these young women working alongside men to find meaning and purpose in their work. When these young men and women joined the Kenya Defense Forces from all parts of this great nation, they became one cohesive family. In 2013, President Kenyatta appointed Rachel Omamo as the Cabinet Secretary of Defense, becoming the first woman in Kenyan history to head this vital docket. This appointment came as a surprise to many, and they had no idea who Rachel Omamo was. I consider myself first as an advocate, uh, second as a diplomat, uh, and third as a, a, a public uh, servant. Um, so that would be me in a nutshell. Omamo says the appointment caught her by surprise and was a bit apprehensive since she wasn't familiar with the ministry. I was quite shocked. And, um, and the last thing I expected uh, was to go to the Ministry of Defense. Uh, but all credit uh, to the Kenya Defense Forces and, uh, and for the generals and officers that I worked with. Uh, you haven't met a group of people who are so professional, so courteous, uh, so willing to, to execute, so willing to help you learn. She says upon her appointment, questions and reservations were raised about her ability to handle this sensitive docket. However, this did not dampen her spirits. As a woman, you're always going to confront the challenges of, of patriarchy, 
um, and you will encounter stereotypes. Uh, but your challenge is to lead anyway. As a woman, if you worry too much about what other people are saying, then you will find that you will not move forward. You will become so consumed uh, by other people's perceptions that you lose sight of yourself. She is pleased that she engineered remarkable changes and initiatives during her tenure, which included promotion of many women to high ranks. A lot of women are participating in positions of leadership. Uh, it has seen women progressing up uh, the ladder. We have seen more women in peacekeeping. And in this, we really have to give President Kenyatta credit. Omamo, who is the current Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs, says that she learned valuable lessons in the Ministry of Defense, which she says have made her a better civil servant. One thing that I gained from working uh, with the Kenya Defense Forces was to understand uh, the burden of duty, the burden of service, because you're working with people who are prepared to lay down their lives for the country. Uh, so it was a very moving experience, a very profound, uh, life-changing experience, I think, for me. When Omamo was moved to the Foreign Affairs Ministry, she handed the tools of trade to another remarkable woman, Ambassador Dr. Monica Juma. A diplomat by profession, Ambassador Juma recalls her appointment and describes it as one of the greatest assignments bestowed on her by the president. First sense was a sense of uh, surprise, pleasant surprise, I think. Um, but also a, a deep sense of gratitude and a sense of reaffirmation from His Excellency the President. Happy with her role in championing for promotion of women in the military, Juma says she is confident that she delivered efficiently during her stint at the Ministry of Defense. Uh, and then MOD, of course, the development of systems in terms of business systems in, 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 in MOD, uh, the promotion of women to decision-making in MOD, but I hope also I can be remembered by the expanded role of the KDF in auxiliary services and in civic, in civil military relations. Juma, who is currently the CS for Energy, says that the president's move to appoint women in key positions in the government is an indication that he has confidence in them and appreciates that this gives hope to young girls that the future is bright. The question about empowering women, there's always two sides to it. There's a lot of rhetoric, you know, about women empowerment. And when you look at the rhetoric versus the action, there's always a big gap. But President Kenyatta has demonstrated that leadership matters in terms of the seriousness to empower women. Because if you look at the appointments that he has made, say in the executive, um, it has not been the so-called or perceived as soft areas for women. Another first for the military during President Kenyatta's administration was in July 2018. Fatuma Ahmed made history when she became the first Kenyan woman to attain the rank of Major General in KDF. Nina furaha isio na kifani. Tunamshukuru Rais na namashukuru the Defense Council kwa kuwa na imani nami ya kwamba naweza kuhudumu ama kuchangia katika mikakati ya usalama wa nchi hii. She says that women like their male counterparts have the equal roles to play in protecting the integrity of the country. Inaonyesha sisi kina mama tuaweza pia kuchangia katika mikakati ya usalama ya nchi hii. Proud to be the first female Major General, Ahmed says the future for female soldiers is now solid.
kweli unaona hata serikali inaonyesha kwa kutambua mara ya kwanza ya kwamba katika ngazi za juu ya jeshi hii hata kina mama wanaweza kuchangia na wapewe nguvu na hii ndio mwanzo na nafurahi ya kwamba njia ya mbele mimi ndio nimeifungua Brigadier Joyce Sitene is another experienced woman in the Kenya Army. After high school, Sitene undertook a Bachelor of Education degree and even became a teacher for a while. But her love for military finally took over and she dropped the chalk for the gun. When I saw the military, the kind of parades they do, the discipline with which they execute what they do, I thought that would be an interesting place um, to be. She says when she joined the training school, things were not as rosy as they look during National Day celebrations parades mounted by the military. Military training is tough, and so I questioned my decision on one or two occasions. Had I made the right choice? Was it, um, did I have to go through all that physical exertion to be able to get a job? But I told myself it's a decision you made on your own. Nobody forced you to join the military. Brigadier Sitene, who is currently the Director International Peace Support Training Center, says that during those years, life was not easy for women in the military. Because at the time I joined the military, women weren't allowed to get married. Women could not have children. She says she is very glad that this is now a thing of the past. Things have changed tremendously for women in the military. Um, since I joined, I have seen progressive change in terms and conditions of service for women. Today, we see ourselves in the Air Force, in the Army, and in the Navy, being able to choose whatever um, career options we want to choose within, within the services. Although Kenya is ranked top in including the highest number of women in peacekeeping missions, Brigadier CTNA says KDF is working on recruiting more women towards this goal. We are working on increasing the percentages of women uh, in, in the defense forces and also um, strategically deploying these women in areas that um, are critical for peace support operations. CTNA says women in the forces are very appreciative to President Kenyatta, who during his term has ensured a commendable number of women have joined the military each year, and those already in service promoted to powerful positions. The president has been uh, a key supporter of women empowerment in the country, and he has been a good example of a leader who understands the critical role and asset of women in development. Her life in the army, she says, is full of fond memories. One is my deployment as a major to the 15 Kenya Rifles as the first lady to deploy there. The second was my deployment in Rwanda as part of the Kenya uh, military uh, training assistance team. And of course, my deployment in the Democratic Republic of Congo as a military observer. Another inspiring woman in uniform is Brigadier Elizabeth Omolo. Brigadier Omolo, also a teacher by profession, is currently the director of Exams National Defense University. Everybody in the staff room was uh, applying for the job. And I was not keen on applying, so they told me, why don't you just apply? And uh, can I say chance or luck, I was the only one who was chosen from that staff room to come for the interview. We did the interview and uh, here I am. Brigadier Omolo vividly remembers her first day at the Kenya Air Force Training School. Nothing really prepares you for what is next because you really don't know what is there. So you come in, when you get that soldier box, you are kitted and told, carry it. It's a heavy box. And if you see my body frame, you can imagine me with that big box. <laughs> but uh, I can say, on hindsight, it's something like you can laugh about it now. Although the training was very intense, she was determined to graduate 
and serve her country, which she does with no regrets. In as much as you feel like you're quitting, that determination, that resilience in you tells you you have to move on. Nothing was impossible. You get down, yes, you feel like now today I'm at the deep down it. Nothing is moving on. But uh, there's only some love, there are people to cheer you on. Like her other counterparts, Brigadier Omolo says President Kenyatta's push for women empowerment has encouraged not only those in the military, but all women serving in various capacities in the civil service. We are heading somewhere. There is a commitment by him to ensure that women perspectives or gender strategies, uh, gender perspectives are integrated. Not to say they were not there, but you see that push by the head of state. Give it an oomph. She says she is proud to be part of the team that is setting up the National Defense University. I can pride myself to be among the senior officers, ladies at the National Defense University. You know, when uh, you are the pioneers of something, you feel great. Because history will judge you also. Did you do your best? And for me, I think the road we are on is the road to success. <laughs>
Dota, who is the alternate ADC, has been working alongside Colonel Timothy Lekolola. She is grateful that her first day as ADC went on well without a glitch, adding that she had a great support system around her. I was lucky enough, I went to Sagana in, ahead, of, ahead of the president to familiarize myself with the vehicle, and it was heavy. The door was heavy, but <laughs> the presidential escort officers, we did that drill for a few minutes, and I got it. Just like other women in the military, Nduta is thankful that President Kenyatta has come through for women in KDF by ensuring that they are not left behind in matters concerning the country's security. There's been a lot of positive growth in the military pertaining to women. We have more senior female officers. Gender has been mainstreamed. And part of it is owing to, we have a gender mainstreaming policy, gender policy as the Ministry of Defense, and we are reaping the fruits, yes. Luta says her father instilled the love for military into her since she was a child. It is my father who instilled in me the passion for the military. So on the national days where we have parades, it is something we would never miss. My father and I would, every day, Every time there's an occasion, at 11, be waiting for the parade to march on. She says since joining the Kenya Air Force, she has no regrets and she is proud to discharge her duty diligently as with honor. It is very fulfilling to serve, to serve my country in the defense forces. That we are treated as human beings. That, that barriers are not put ahead of us or obstacles are not put because of we are female. Other remarkable officers making history in KDF include Brigadier Yvonne Kiroi, the Chief of Legal Services Defense Headquarters, Colonel Zipora Kiyoko, who is the first female spokesperson for the Kenya Defense Forces, Colonel Christine Kuria, the first female defense advisor, and Colonel Benedetta Kikechi, the Commandant Defense Technical College, DefTech. Sheryl Sandberg, an executive American businesswoman, once said, we need women at all levels, including the top, to reshape the conversation to make sure women's voices are heard and heeded, not overlooked and ignored. Women in the Kenya Defense Forces now have their voices heard and are reshaping the face of the military for tomorrow's generation. <laughs>